All right, I thought I'd flex today. Does your VNA do this? Um, so, uh, first of all, I've showed this instrument before. This is an 80, 8712, and it does normal spectrum analyzer stuff. It you know does Smith charts and S21, S11, all that kind of stuff. But um, it has a floppy disk drive. Now, floppy disk drives are good for saving uh, images of. Uh, graphs and stuff and you can save you can also save instrument states and to save calibration data and things like that but uh, this one is a little special um, I do have other instruments that are this way but this one uh, works the best so I thought I'd show it off so back in the day HP used to build mini computers and uh, very famous ones 80 uh, the 8920, the 8935, the 8945. Um, I started my career programming 8935s, um, and they were a nice instrument. And one of the things they had in them was a basic interpreter language called, um, uh, we used to call it Rocky Mountain Basic. It was developed in Colorado. And uh, that basic version was called Rocky Mountain. It went into instruments, though. After it had gone into computers and stuff, Rocky Mountain Basic uh, went into instruments, and they started calling it iBasic. And so uh, I have a, a, a floppy here that's got some iBasic programs on it. It doesn't have the iBasic is built in. So these machines are 68,000 microprocessor based, and, and iBasic is, is inside of there. Okay? So and when you put in a floppy drive, you can say, uh, Let's see here, save recall, it'll catalog the disk, and it'll show you, uh, it'll show you things that you have in here. You can save things uh, like plotter data is a, a PCX format. Um, you can save uh, uh, instrument states, I believe, as an STA file. Uh, is there any in here? Yeah, this, this one doesn't have any STA files in it. Um, but there are these .bas files, and those are basic programs, okay? So you can scroll around, you can say, okay, I'm really interested in this basic program here. And uh, so we will say programs, we will recall that program, and it'll read it off the disk and, uh, and put it in, uh, in memory and stuff, and then you can, go, you can go look at it, and here's the basic program, and you can run it and, and do things like that. So. Uh, it does allow you to use the wheels and the, uh, you can actually program it from the front panel, which is like, do not do that. <laughs> it's really, really hard. So does your VNA have this? <laughs> a keyboard. So it takes a PS2 keyboard. You just plug a PS2 keyboard in it. I have a little, a little mini keyboard here. And then, uh, and then you can use the keys to do editing and stuff. So you can actually have, a, you have a full blown computer now with Rocky Mountain Basic. Okay. And so let me, uh, let me change the lens here so we can see the screen a little bit better. All right, um, so let's take a catalog of the disk here. Um, let's see, save, cataloging the disk. And we'll pull up, a, uh, pull up a program here. Let's pull up this simple program here. We'll say programs, uh, recall program. And we can edit the program, and here it is. Uh, it's going to clear the screen. It's going to print a splash MSI guy. Then it's going to calculate signs and print them onto the screen. Now, we're showing displays right now. We need to hit iBasic Display, and we'll say Full. So now the full screen is dedicated to, 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 uh, to iBasic. You can also set Upper so that you, you, the basic will run here, but you can still have a measurement down here or, or the opposite. So we'll do full and we'll say run. And there we go. We have a, uh, a print of a sign table. And let's see, I think we can scroll up. Uh, maybe we can't scroll. I guess it went off the top. There you go. <laughs> um, so Let's put in another program here, or, or I could say, we could say edit, okay? So edit, okay, so we're gonna use our keyboard, okay? And we can uh, cursor up and down. And uh, here I have a comment, okay? I'll insert a comment, so I think you hit shift insert, uh, inserts a line, 
and you hit uh, exclamation. So, uh, MSI guy 2021. Um, that's now 2022. Okay, and we can hit enter, and now we have a new line. Uh, let's say simple, simple print program. Okay, so we put in a couple, a couple, a couple lines now, right? And we had a splash of MSI, but it didn't stay around very long. So let's put in a delay here. Uh, so delay or pause? I forget. Um, let's see. We'll do insert, and we'll put in a delay. One. I think it's pause. Pause one. Or let's say pause two. Okay. Yeah, so there's no pause, so it must be delay. Delay. Okay, so it took delay. Um, but I'm not sure if that's the right delay. I think it might be trying something else. It should be all in capitals if it's a, if it's a correct command. So I don't think that's a correct command. Let's go ahead and run it though. Yeah, undefined. And so, uh, pause, delay, wait. Maybe it's wait. There you go. So now it's capitalized so you know it's correct. All right. And so now we can run it. And it said MSI guy. It waited, waited two seconds and then it printed it all out. So why did the MSI guy stay? Well, that's because I used the display command, which is that one line. And then print puts it everywhere else. Now, I don't like the numbering here now, so I can go down to here, and I can say renumber 10, and now it's renumbered everything starting at 10. So it's like the old basic stuff. All right, let's try a different program out. So we've seen a simple print program. Um, let's do graphics. Uh, let's see here, let's catalog the disk. Come down here to signs. We printed, we printed out signs, but let's plot signs. Uh, let's uh, recall this program. And we'll go set the eye, eye display to full. And we'll run this one. And, and there we go. We're plotting a sine and cosine and uh, writing some data. So um, it, it does have full graphics capability. You can, you, all of the plot commands, basically the old plotter commands that uh, HP used to have. Uh, so you have a draw and pen up, pen down, and move, rectangle, triangle. All those things are built into here. So here's this. Uh, nice little program that you can run. But let's say you want to do something with the actual instrument, okay? How do you actually control the instrument? Uh, so that's pretty cool. You could read the book and memorize all these commands and everything, or you could do a cool thing. We'll clear this program, okay? And so we go back to edit, there's, there's nothing in here, right? But we can say key record on. So this is a really cool trick, okay? So let's say that we want to make a measurement uh, so we'll hit the uh, measurement one button, and um, then we will set frequency. We want the start frequency to 144 megahertz, and the stop frequency to 148 megahertz. Okay, let's, so let's say that we're interested in doing something like that. All right, so we're going to go back. We're going to turn recording off, and we're going to edit it. And it has uh, put in all of the, uh, this is basically scuppy. Some people call it skippy. Um, these are all of the commands that you would have to send to this instrument in order to program it. It doesn't matter if you're programming it from the outside world or the inside world. You're going to treat it like an HPIB instrument. So uh, you assign uh, the 8712 to 800. So now this becomes 800. So that's the internal code. It says, okay, so I'm going to talk to eight on the HPIB bus, but internally it's called 800. So it talks to itself. And then you can, uh, you can uh, look down here. You can say, okay, here's where we're setting the start frequency to 144. Here are the stop frequency to 148. Um, and so you can just push buttons and you can create your own code and everything. Um, so it's it's very very clever. I, I, I like this feature a lot. So let's um, 
Let's show you a program here. Um, the, the instrument came with a bunch of sample programs. Let's load one of those. Um, I don't think we have to clear it. I think we can just go here, catalog the disk, and I believe... Well, here's a canned program that, I, that we, we loaded. Now let's do this one, programs, recall program. And let's run this one. And it says the time is uh, 155.25. And so uh, there is a time function. And that's, that's a, a, a sample program that they gave you. Uh, let's go look at a, at a kind of a more full-blown sample. Um, let's see here. What was it called? What was it called? Connect? I think it's called connect. Let's let's load that one. Okay, and let's run that one. Yeah. So here's a sample of you're making a measurement, and you put it in the bottom half of the display. And on the top half of the display is your basic program. And here they've drawn a little picture in the program and said connect through from RF out to RF in, then press normalize. And so here's normalize too. You can actually define these keys. You can have actions on these keys. And so this is a full blown sample of actually telling the user what to do. So if you had an operator that doesn't really understand things, you can give them a little picture here, like you need to connect the RF in to the RF out and press normalize and stuff. Um, so anyway, let's go take a look at that. Let's, uh, let's pause this program, we'll edit edit the program. So it's a very lengthy program. Let me get my keyboard here. Draws a simple connection diagram and displays a soft key. So yeah, so we've seen that. This program works only when the iBasic option has been installed. The hack that I did on this instrument enabled the iBasic uh, portion of it as well. Um, so yeah, very well commented. Um, Anyway, um, there were a diskette that you got with the instrument with sample programs, and, and those are online now. You can actually find those, find those online. Anyway, uh, what else can I say about the, about the basic? Um, I did play full. Anyway, I think, uh, I think you get the idea. It has a full programming capability now. The cool thing is that you can set up the instrument to be controlled by a computer, so you can have some other computer controlling this with HPIB, but because you actually have BASIC, you can have this as the controller. So I could use this program and maybe talk to, let's say I want to talk to a DVM. So I can actually go talk to the DVM, get that data back in here, and I can print voltages, or I can control my uh, power supply, my HPIB power supply. So like I could be characterizing maybe an amplifier, and I could have it one, at one sweep at 11 volts, one sweep at 12 volts, one sweep at 13 volts, and it would automatically do all of that um, by having the program talk to the, uh, uh, talk to the, uh, the uh, power supply. Um, you could have a frequency counter. You could have all kinds of things hooked up, right? And so you, this, this really could just be the, 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 the main thing. Another thing that you can do is um, uh, in cataloging the disk, there's a program here called Auto ST, Auto Start. And if that program, you, you write a program, and if you, if you name the program Auto Start, Okay, um, it will automatically load that program when we power on the instrument, and it will actually execute it. Okay, so let's uh, let's power off the instrument. I will leave the diskette in, and I will power it on. So it's going and looking at the uh, floppy right now, and it says, it says, oh, uh, I don't see any Cal data that I need to know about, but I'm going to initialize, I'm going to go read the disk a second time and look for that auto start program. It says, ah, there is an auto start program, and I'm going to run it, okay, loading auto start program, 
and uh, it came up and it said IMSA guys 8712C <laughs> and then it did some other things so we can take a look at my little program here so it just set up some some normal things it says hey I want to have 800 points for my calibration data um, I want to set it to a 50 ohm system um, I'm going to set my start and stop frequencies to some some known condition uh, anyway, you, you can set up, and then at the very end, I, I say display MSI guys 8712. So automatically, it runs the program. So again, if you had production workers and stuff, you just turn the instrument on and it would do everything automatically. So um, pretty, pretty clever instrument.